What is the true essence of black girl magic? Each week, I sit down for a deep and meaningful conversation with some of Africa's most inspiring women and hear their stories of love, loss, and second chances. My name is Dawn Faith. Join me on this journey of discovery. Thank you so much for honoring me with your presence. And I hope you all have a good night. So, to tonight and deep and meaningful conversations. Cheers. 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 All right. So, right at the bit, let's give us a hard time because he's the only one who hasn't been by me with my deep and meaningful conversation question. When I say woman, what happens to you? What do you think of? What does the word woman mean to you? And what is your relationship with the word woman? I think. Um, official. I think I'm familiar with the woman species. Not in a negative connotation, mm-hmm. but honestly, yeah, yeah. I'm very comfortable with women. I'm comfortable around women, yeah. and I know how to look after women. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. That's how, much, how much do you think those women have influenced the kind of woman you look for? when it comes to um, relationships? Actually, yeah. I think that's a very good question because in a way, I think that raises the standards. I sort of had those different women figures in my life that I pretty much feel they all each had to play a certain role in the type of woman that I get to look, look for mm-hmm. because I didn't necessarily spend all of my um, young life with them. Mm-hmm. At some point, my mom you know, met my, my, my dad, well, my stepfather, whom I've always recorded as my father because yeah. my biological father unfortunately left us earlier. And then we moved out to, you know, a different home, a hospital view, a massab of Sassiloxi. And I guess um, the environment played such a big role in me wanting um, certain standards. Okay. So my standards are pretty much high. Okay, what are they, if I may ask? And I mean, I think it's pretty much what a lot of men look for. I mean, you're looking for somebody with values, somebody who's driven in life, somebody who's. Um, you know, respectful, somebody that wants or ready is to build a home, okay. somebody that wants to build a big family. I think the type of work that I'm doing, what I'm creating, I'm creating wealth, and I'd really love a big family. I'd really love to pass it on to my children. Okay. And you are also looking for somebody who wants to build that sort of a family environment. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I found actually really amazing to talk with was in one of the conversations, she was saying that part of the challenge I suppose both for males and females mm-hmm. is the expectations we have of each other mm-hmm. or the lack thereof. So she was talking about Umubeo, ne? Mm-hmm. And she was saying Umubeo is a, a typical guy, so he doesn't have a necessarily a typical romantic bone yeah. in him. So the notion of crazy, you waiting for flowers, good luck. But they might not show up. But he was then saying, rather she was then saying, well, so she has to learn that sometimes it's about understanding that all men are not the same yep. yeah. and romance might show up differently. You know, yes. So for example, her example was Umubego, when they do grocery shopping and they come back from doing their shopping, Umubego always says to her, you go sit down, I'll make you a cup of tea mm-hmm. and him mm-hmm. also unpack her. This oh, wow. yeah, you know, mm-hmm. that's his lab language. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's part of the challenge is that mm-hmm. sometimes as women, we have these expectations which this is the way the guy is supposed to do yeah. something for us and then when that falls apart then we you know and then we fall short of it or even as us know is tandani but we build in the beautiful so i want that and so i want flowers that's why it's important to just take a step back mm-hmm. and and just watch him true Very watch true. him in action appreciate the things that um, are positive attributes yeah. about him and based on that then you get to understand his love language 
So don't try and make him or put him into a box that you want him to fit in. Mm. So very true. Um, you know, I always say there's something about millennials in the way they phrase things sometimes. You know, there's some good to social media. And I, I came across this one posting once that said there are many ways to say I love you. Mm -hmm. Like, did you eat? Mm. How's your day? Mm. Are you warm? May mm. I get the door? Like, all that says I'm concerned so that's about true. your well-being of the true. day. I'm concerned about your, your emotional, your heart status. It's, yeah. it's love language. Mm. And you're right. And I think sometimes we want to box it so often. And we have this sort of blueprint that was created by mass media. You know, we all want that pretty woman, mm. Richard Gere, coming mm. with the flowers, mm -hmm. and you go... But well, where does that come from? Because it's not even yeah. our story, it's black folks. Mm. No, it's not. Like, what, what, what is our, like, as black folks, ne? Do, do any of you know, what is our love language? Like, what? Like, ne, it sounds like very ancient. Mm, but before... Sorry, white people. But before <laughs> white people showed us their version of romance, like, I, I even think, coined it, mm. love language. You yeah, wondering, Sean, mm. like, do we know for ourselves, within our own culture and within our own people, how did we show what love is? Mm. I think also what we see on TV has sort of diluted so much who we are mm -hmm. that we have no concept or perception of what really is real yeah. and how we are always eager and always so anxious to actually, one, make money to do this, to get to the next point, we actually stop. We don't actually make time to stop and appreciate. Like we're talking about love languages. That book sums it up, that boils down to five. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. and, and, and reading it, and I know that my husband and I had a, a, a where I was like, you're not even reading the book. <laughs> and you know, I don't need to read the book. If you just looked deep enough, you would see that there's probably languages that I speak on love that are not quoted in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about flowers. I, I'm that flower person, mm -hmm. and I, I kick a fuss about flowers. You know, Sam, <laughs> uh, poor guy, has learned, you know, sometimes he forgets. Sometimes I come with flowers, I'm like, look, you bought me flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what I've learned to appreciate is the fact that because he knows that I'm one of those people who have insomnia, like I, I don't sleep really well at night, he will make sure that anything that needs to be done in terms of taking kids to school, he keeps them away from me in the morning so that mm. mommy can have... That's also his love language, right? Mm. Yes, because I live my Indian issue. Even now, I'm a flower. That's what you know, that's who saying. said that's actually the most perfect way of communicating romance or love for your significant other? Yeah. So him... In his way, making sure good in Ghana, he writes, excelling, look na look Gwenzi. That's his, you know, his own interpretation of communicating love to you. We were talking earlier mm. because you were going contradictory that Russia does its land. Yeah, these are the criteria. But things have changed. I think with um, also gender equality issues mm. and just the more and more. Um, Independence that a lot of women have right now, you know, in 2017, all over the world, mm. more and more women um, um, decide what they want out of their lives. More and more women are independent. But and given still, through, I think, to, to, to the point is that yes, more and more women get to decide, quote unquote, what we want for ourselves, but we still get the sort of prescriptions, mm -hmm. as you said, Donald, yeah. who we should be. So even yeah, in our time within these parameters, within the yes. parameters of how the far who they are. Who's parameters, though? Them, whoever them who's are. Them? And society. then the society, who's them is you? society that society. is male-driven by male standards and male expectations of what the girl child should be. Yeah, and unfortunately, the girl child from birth, yeah. you already come with a the limitations. Of, you're a woman, you've got to be good. And it's in that your DNA to be good. Be good. Yeah. And that measure of good is, so what does that mean? So that, does that mean I can't make mistakes? Mm. Does that mean like, I can't you know, be human? I can't be human, does that mean I can't fault it? Mm. What, does, what is good? Yeah. And why and who do you define and who I define what is good? This is how little girls behave, mm. and this is how little boys behave. Mm. Yeah. So, what, what I'm so trying to say, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. You're, you're coming, Justin. What I'm trying to say is the modern day woman has decided that, that that is not going to be according to how I'm living my life. I make my own decisions, I make my own money. If I decide that I actually do not want to get married, or I actually decide that I do not want to have kids in my life, or I decide that when I do find a man, I don't cook, and he has to understand that, <laughs> and those types of things. Mm. I've met women like that who are 2017 women, 
that have got their own understanding of yeah. how they want their marriage they to be, to, yeah. and that they do not follow the old school way of doing things. Or, they make or a lot of that make you feel as a, as a man, because we we can't sit and and men men differ. Yeah. There's men like some of my friends who are very old school in their approach, mm -hmm. who are strict, and they're like, whoever you are, who's on your peg, yeah, and I understand um, that. We we are like as in professional, you'll be a professional at work. Mm -hmm. You'll be this and that over there. But when it comes here, you're my wife. You'll do such and such. But that also comes with the understanding from the both of you. That's true. So if you also, as that type of a woman, understand that I'm getting into this with this type of a man, yeah, and yeah. this is his culture, and this is how he wants things to be done, then I'm in it. Then that's fine. But for me, whatever makes you happy. And if I like you, then hey. Oh, but also you've triggered another thought for me now. Really. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm going to be quiet and forget. Please, 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 can I not choke on this thought yeah. and not forget it? What, be that as it may, yeah. it's not as black and white. Yeah. She can decide, she can make yeah. up her own rules, she can yeah. have her own guidelines. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody who's labeling her. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily to her face. Mm -hmm. yep. Somebody in the family, somebody in the society, Despite somebody in the yeah. industry. Yeah. So as you are too Hello. strong, you are too bold, you are too straightforward. No, yeah. she's arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just know what I want. Mm. I don't want to cook, yes, because I mean, you know, yeah. take away. Maybe the husband understands. who understand and who will speak on your behalf. Who are vocal about me and my person, we, we are understand, like we are like this, and I prefer her like that. Because you know what I also find sometimes, yeah. even, and it's behavior that irks me, I'm generalizing, but I've observed a few men. Like, men will come into a relationship one way. You guys have an understanding, this is how we do things, then they change, you know? and you go. Then you Society get inside pressure. the family structure, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. suddenly yeah. you're dealing with a yeah. whole different human being. You know? yeah. But mm -hmm. this is when the rules and conduct of our life. Why you act so different around your mama? Yes. But now it's, it's in now it's in being. Now it's in being. No. It's a million years of things that I want to see and still have understood. It's true. into a relationship one way. You guys have an understanding, this is how we do things, then they change you know, and you go. Then you Society get inside pressure. the family structure. Yeah. And Society suddenly pressure. you're dealing with yeah. a whole different human being. Yeah. You know? yeah. But mm -hmm. these are not the rules and conduct of our relationship. Why you act so different around your mama? Yes. But now it's in being. Now it's in being. No. It's a million of them until I want to see and still have an understanding. It's true. No, but for me, and then they say you change your behavior and I won't. Whereas the male species in the relationship suddenly will be like, oh no, but babe. And you go, no, but can I pay no, you? No, 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 no. Can I pay you? Can I pay you? Can I pay you? for one no. second? No. Go ahead. This is where I think us as sisters uh -huh. don't catch each other's back. Uh -huh. The more times I've been challenged about my husband's weight, mm -hmm. and it's been 10 years, surely he should be wearing a different size. <laughs> by That's because you don't cook for him, him and like blah, blah, blah. Mother, I love you, mom. My own mother is like, no, I'll, I'll pay. Like, we are in Staza. And, and nobody <laughs> thinks that he has work. a good metabolism. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, he's got good genes. Oh, he's got good genes. I mean. Do you know what I mean? And, and so sometimes it's actually trying to break down our own ways of thinking. Yes, there mm. are those guys who have expectations that in this day and age are unrealistic. But I think also it, it is then for ourselves, the way we set us up, because more often than not, a guy is never going to ask me, if I go, Don, when I met your dude like five years ago, mm. he was like 10 kilos, man, Jay, he looks too. Mm. He probably doesn't even recognize those things. And I think it is in a combination yeah. of finding some level of unity within ourselves around what it is that we want um, that then begins to break those stereotypes. So I don't yeah. know if I'm making any sense. No, you make perfect mm -hmm. sense. I think as women, we are our own worst enemy. That's mm -hmm. true. We are the most judgmental of yeah. ourselves, mm -hmm. by ourselves, and oftentimes that leaves the door for the opposite sex to jump in. Mm -hmm. Because as you say, we don't safeguard ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and we'd be like, oh, but, but, and you go, 
But you're a woman. You're supposed and to often relate. times my perceptions are based on my circumstances yeah, and yes. my experience. Then I would want to impose that yeah, on someone true. else. You know, when I make decisions, I, I make them based on what I know. Mm -hmm. and, and whether it's wrong or right by your standards, mm -hmm. it's what I know. Exactly. And, and we need to get to a place where we acknowledge that we're different as people. Yeah. And before I even judge, I need to then engage you and understand from which place or what place you're coming from mm -hmm. in making mm -hmm. a specific decision. Yeah. But I've realized that more often than not, guys have longer standing relationships. You find that more guys will have long term friendships with, with their men. And even if there's like a bit of a friction, guys will solve Leo friction, quick nights, and it will leave it. Whereas for us women, sometimes it's like, oh, well, we're only was friends with two yeah. What happened to Bridget? Right up a person. Sorry, oh, but I think it's like that. Like that, that happens in the boardroom as well, by the way. Because when they identify a position, like men will vouch for each yeah. other. With us, as you write, you climb that corporate ladder, um, there's always, and it will be women who are saying, I slept your way up. Wow. Um, mm. pull head down syndrome wow. those phrases come from us yeah. and at some stage we really need to get our and also together. society enables it because you know the point of the matter is in order to keep indoctrinating the female mind yeah. and having her feel as though she's inferior than as a species, as a collective is you've got to add the fuel to the fire so it helps the societal narrative if Oh, by the way, they can only be one woman in that position. Mm. So ladies fight. You know, it's like yeah. taking two hands and putting them in a little box and going, duke it up. You say, you say, you say, you say, yeah. I was about to say that I think it also comes from the fact that women are compared yeah. against each other a lot. And it, like, yeah, especially in our industry. Yeah. Like you get one, one it person at, at a time, time. Mm. and let's focus on this one if somebody else comes up let's oh, measure no, her against this like one, one you know mm. but but yeah. you're not like okay like you write the book no but you know this one wrote it better mm. or this one has got you think that's not the case for guys no. Even if, if even if it's there subtly, but they don't wear it out so loud it's like I think you obviously have to look at how uh, people are brought up in family environments, how a girl is brought up if they are siblings, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to Abafana. Instead of you know looking at it now in our industry, and I understand this is our own perspective, mm -hmm. but you know we're only a small mm -hmm. fraction of the nation of mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. A majority of people out there who are watching us right now on the continent are ordinary people, mm -hmm. and it boils down to how we were brought up. So use the same judgment on younger girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they compared to one another? All the time. Yeah. All, I think yeah. so. All the time. always be told of so. so doing better in school, who looks better. Yeah. Um, why don't you behave like Why don't you behave like Uban Bani? Mm. She cleans better. Mm. She looks after her parents Who's better. With girls, there's way much I more think pressure. Even a month of so. Yeah. Like one will I, come we back know so. Mm. There's mm. way much more pressure with girls. So like, mm. like one will come back from school and say, okay, like I, I keep my hair natural. I sort of encourage my daughter to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. My daughter has natural hair too. But at some point she she'll say... She actually uses products. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of. <laughs> she will come back and she'll say, uh, can I relax my hair? Because like so-and-so's hair is like, or can I not braid my hair? Because so-and-so has got braids. And I'm like, but where's this coming from? Look at me, my hair's natural. Yeah, but your hair's colored. You just can't color yours right now, but mm -hmm. we can do other things with it until such time that you can. But she's feeling the pressure of, okay, like I'm not the, 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 the number one... Um, a ballerina or so and so's uh, pointy what what is better than mm -hmm. than me or I can't use this hair for ballet because A B C and D. I think it's uh, society is harder on girls yeah. mm -hmm. than 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 boys. Yeah, I, it doesn't reinforce also positivity mm -hmm. around young girls. That that's the other thing that I always find is a problem because it's one thing maybe to have like negative narratives or whatever, yeah. but even within the family structure. There is no reinforcement because so mom right. can come mm -hmm. and try and say something to boost the ego and boost the morale, and then you've got Aunt Man Bani who comes mm -hmm. and completely different the whole conversation. Even with gender-based violence, you'd find um, when a girl reports that I've, I was raped by either a relative or, or mm -hmm. a stranger, the first question is, what what did you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you wearing? 
and and we we need to unlearn some of these things that are just so deeply embedded in how we we respond to situations that affect women mm. but i think with boys as well it's very competitive when you're growing up i, okay. I think when you when you're you know non mm. and mm. it's also very highly competitive mm. either with athletics at school or with your grades in class okay. or with how the other one looks mm. and you're also being always compared with you know i think it's similar you know and I I w- maybe it's just because there's not so much focus on it that then we feel that the woman issue is more in I guess you know for me I can't speak on behalf of women so I, would, I wouldn't know but I mean I obviously grew up around girls um, for me I'd know with boys that everything that you guys are saying mm. it's the same thing that happens with boys differently okay. yes there's that masculinity um, factor that comes in where you know obviously then brings in a whole lot another issue of and those types of things yeah. and we're growing up in those we grew up in those types of homes yeah. but as times are evolving i can also i actually started seeing it from when um my mom was bringing up our other when i say siblings meaning you know my got siblings yes yes i'm not like that but then my mom and my mom yeah 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 got nine love a and you know the person my mom always like up your mama's mama look to trap her and but your mama is no longer that trapping mama anymore your mama is more sweet your mama is more different my my two daughters always say that um about the youngest like, but you used to beat us up, you used to say things to us. Why is it that this yeah, one gets no one it easy? And I'm like, but yeah. times have changed. Times change. Times, yeah. times have changed. And I'm also engaging her in her capacity of who she is now. Mm. Like, but you never used to be like that, man. Mm. But can you see how powerful providing information yeah. is? Because, yeah. 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 you know, they it used to tell us, when there's kissing, begale, <laughs> and, and you didn't even understand what, why, <laughs> you know, why? Then you're gonna <laughs> then you get up and go kiss yes. somebody. You want, no, you want to see. Curious. No, guys, my son turned three in January. Then we took a bath the other day, and this is still showing daytime. So we will try to take the graphics out. But we took a bath the other day. Um, he's yeah, he's turning three in January. So Luanda, he sits in the bath and he says, and, he, and I can see what he's looking at me, and he's very intrigued. All of a sudden, firstly, I'm like. You shouldn't be intrigued. And be <laughs> Don't look at me like that. At, at this age, what do you know? Eyes up. Eyes <laughs> up. You know, and then after a while, he pokes there. And he says, Mommy, what's this? <laughs> and it was a tricky thing for me. Be- because then there's an opportunity to educate and to teach. Mm. But I think one of the things I really loved about our episode, you talked about how we, we can... Um, demystify sex yeah and our bodies mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the most important yeah. you, you yeah. know to stop making it this is like this big thing so stop stop having the kids are chasing this thing that they mm-hmm. don't know yeah you know and i'm like okay lord Jesus, literally this was like a holy spirit moment which is very awkward because you're sitting butt naked in a bathtub with your two-year-old son and you're having mm-hmm. a moment with jesus mm-hmm. yeah and i'm like okay jesus th- th- this is where it starts yeah mm-hmm. and i need you to help me right now to because how i choose to start this conversation mm-hmm. And how I choose to start engaging with my boy about body and, you know, and private parts begins to be the part that, that he then has his own identity. And it was really hard I just had to say, you know, these two. So I'm hoping he's not going to remember what I said. But I was able to just say, Baba, this is, <laughs> this is what this <laughs> is. <laughs> no, for real. And then he's like, then he looks at himself and he goes, Okay, yeah, mom's in pubic hair. And he was like, oh, hey. And if you think they're much smarter. No, but his face goes, they are. Hey, hey. Like, 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 you. Like, hey, it's not supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But you were very deep. <laughs> <laughs> me right now to because how I choose to start this conversation mm. and how I choose to start engaging with my boy about body and you know and private parts mm. begins to be the part that that he then has his own identity and it was really hard I just had to say 
you know, he is too. So I'm hoping he's not going to remember what I said. But I was able mm-hmm. to just say, Baba, this is, <laughs> this is what mm-hmm. this is. Likewise. <laughs> 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 no, for real. And then he's like, then he looks at himself and he goes, Okay, I'm up to pubic hair. And he was like, oh, hey. Let me see. Have you seen them much smarter? No, but his face goes. They are. Hey. 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 Um, and she was talking about, to your point about your three-year-old son and how to sort of dialogue with children at different stages, mm-hmm. which I found really cool and I took notes for the future. And she said, for as long as your kid can articulate the, the question, mm-hmm. they're ready to hear the honest answer. Wow, wow. That's, that's, it. that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So that's that should exactly always it. give you short That's the barometer. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so don't, yeah. you don't have to engage And don't call it something else, not something that is Call it what it is. Call it wow. what it exactly. is. Because they w- that will be their point of reference. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My question came in a very awkward <laughs> <laughs> in situation. A very, in a very awkward way. My three old who's four next year says, Mommy, where's yours? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy being daddy, daddy's private. Yeah. Mommy is more Free. flexible. Yeah. So, so as I, I look at me, mm, mommy was I'm like um <laughs> Mommy is mommy's is inside <laughs> and you need to you need to hang around dead when you shower the This is a daddy question. So you that's when you, know that that you know that we're not doing this shower thing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's done. Yeah, like we grow up. Now, now yeah. if I need to, I'm like, where's Nintendo? I need the key. Can I lock the box? That's it. That's it. Before you have to answer awkward questions. But you never see it coming, eh? No. It just comes out of the blue. Kids would just ask you stuff. And how old was, how is your, what age was that, sorry? He's three. Oh, three years. Like, he's four in Feb. To be the magic number. Yes. I remember one, yeah. one of my old daughters three. when she first had her menses. <laughs> and I was curious. I wanted to know what's the understanding of what this means. Mm-hmm. So I asked her, do you know what this means? So yes. Like casually, yes. Like, oh, okay. Okay. This is going to be easy. So mm-hmm. what does it mean? I'm ready to have sex. How? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. No, 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 no,
that's how my mom would know if I've had sex. Yes. The more you try and um, yeah, the more, yeah, you the more the, exactly. And also for mm. me, that kind of tactic, speaking from a place of not having any children yet, but that kind of tactic, I, I think sometimes also it, it, it does the reverse because mm. when you frighten someone to a state where then as they're growing, naturally evolving with curiosity that they're supposed to have, mm. you've put this devilish fear into something that is organically natural that you could breed a woman who's yeah. insecure or a, a, a no, man who's insecure absolutely. in so many ways. Absolutely. You know, so I can imagine it's a slippery, slippery yeah. slope well, as it is. how you guys engage the dialogue. Yeah. It's the catch-22 mm. with the church yeah. where, where, you know, Ooh. we teach so much about um, remaining pure and there's mm. such an emphasis on sex before sex marriage. Before marriage. Now, now let me be clear. For mm. me, my stance is I absolutely believe in that. Mm. But I think that the, the over emphasis mm. on it or and the lack of the information in between manja you move from being you must remain pure to manja you married and all of a sudden you go out with your back I'll be a son of Jezebel and you get a crash course in a kitchen teapot. Oh really? Eh? No, you feel old. Good. You kind of erase whatever it is that they told you all your life. Yeah, yeah. They and call you, give you and cake and tea, and then they tell you, go, you better work it. Yeah. Like your auntie. Get you on your knees, not, not only to, not only to pray, but to your auntie. <laughs> 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 no, they tell you during the process, during the deed, you should be praying. You know, and I'm Remember, so this, this is me, so they do. But you mean, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 what the I'm the no, no, they said during the day, well, you should be praying for it. That's how mm-hmm. God is then making sure the union is coming together. <laughs> no, we're not no, praying for it. When that like stays. <laughs> because that instills fear, mm-hmm. anxiety mm-hmm. on your wedding day, because you have to try and remember. No, and then the I relationship. have to get it right. If I mess it up, it's my fault. No, that's what I'm going to do. No, but come on, it's not like we're going to do it. Come on, come on. No, but I want to do it. No, no, no. No, no. Not when you're no. 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 on your life. background. No. 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 Bad. I understand. It, it takes you straight to a And I understand that. You can't be a Jezebel. Yo, hmm. and, and suddenly I, you are told that Jezebel is a Jezebel. 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 I mean, we're living in this society. But you know what? I think sometimes we underestimate the power of socialization. Mm. Whether it comes from mass media, whether it comes from structured institutions, education, religion, socialization of the human being. It's the, and then you wake up one day and you go, how did we get here? Yeah. Mm. It's because really the messaging, the subliminal messaging That's that you get and it remains day, with you. It remains with you. Mm-hmm. Like it's part of that thing it's that the creates reference. The, the reference, yeah. the DNA of who you are. As you walk here today, you are fully formed by all the experiences, all the people that you affected in your life. That, you know what I mean? It's a huge part of you. And, and I totally hard. agree. But the church, a lot of the times, is probably what, like once or twice, at most thrice a week. If you're gonna go during the week in Tambama <laughs> and also on the sun, but most of the time, only only on yes, 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 I believe you. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of the times, is, and now, and this is now, you now. Mm-hmm. But you can't tell me that's been consistent all over. Grew your up life. in the church. The same year, I grew up in the church, but at some point, I rebelled but against the church. You see, you have and then I, and then I started yeah. getting introduced, and, and and I understand. No, no, I'm not. I'm not the only one. There's a lot of sisters who started getting introduced to so Bumnandi, going mm-hmm. out, mm-hmm. meeting up with other friends who might not be practicing the same church values or the yes. same values as you mm. and who are also trying to lure you to their own world mm. where you're also sometimes, sometimes tempted mm-hmm. you know to tra- try or something taste yeah. one or two things yeah. 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 here and there yeah. Yeah. And, and that's bound to happen you're a human being you're young you have to experience things and learn and get your fingers burned and, and come back and be in order just like we all have <laughs> question yeah. in, in our parting ways. Having experienced everything that you have and having lived the ups and the lows and the in-betweens in your life, what is the one thing that you know now that you wish you knew then? And any takers, and I'd love to hear a response mm-hmm. from each of you. Yeah. What do you know now? 
that you're like, man, if I knew that then, that would have, you know, changed the game altogether. I think I mentioned it um, during our conversation, but yeah. I'm enough. But yeah. I'm enough and I have everything I need and I want to be within me. Mm. If I had known that, mm. um, and, and you know, and then comes this wisdom-filled woman who's also on um, a smooth radio show, mm -hmm. um, who talks about his, his voice of wisdom, mm -hmm. who taught me about the fact that each time you engage sexually with a male species, part of your soul is left with them. Mm -hmm. If I knew that piece of information, then I look back, there are certain people who didn't deserve my soul. Wow. And if I can have you know, those one-on-one -on -one conversations with young women today? Yeah, that would be Young it. women and men. Yeah. Because I equally believe that there are certain men that Give really look back and feel like yeah. that woman did not deserve a piece of me. Wow. wow. If I knew that. Man. If I knew that. Boom. I think um, understanding, if, if I had understood earlier on in my life, uh, not that I'm that old, <laughs> but um, it, well, it, it, I can I can say that based on you know being being having started at about 18, and this is like 20 20 years later, later yeah. and I understood earlier on in my life that actually people's opinions, I actually stick some stones. Opinions. They don't break me. They don't make me. There's a lot of decisions that I would have made differently. I there were points where I cared a little bit too much about what they actually, thought. I don't care. Yeah. It's God that makes me. It's That's God it. that brings me to where I am. And like Chris says, I am enough. And if somebody tells me that actually you're a bit too outspoken, you're a bit too what so what? That's my truth. If if I've got if I've got the words, let me use them. Why not? Yours for you your yours is to understand them and actually get the real meaning and catch the spirit that I said it with. Not want to listen to them based on your perception of, okay. of who I am. Okay. I, like I think that. That, that that would be it. Opinions are opinions. They bounce now they bounce off. Girl, they bounce off. And I'm sure there was a time when Ooh. they did, they they and had specific targets mm -hmm. and, and you would feel every mm -hmm. pinch, every beat. Mm -hmm. But not anymore. Now we get up and go. You say something like, okay. Jesus, okay. Jesus. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. And then she looks at me. So yeah. Oh man. Um, I think the thing that I know now is, be all right, baby girl. Mm. Like, really, everything's gonna be all right. You know, I like, you know, by now, um, based on our past conversation, I like to keep things simple and to the point. Mm. And I think sometimes we. We stress too much in the moment, and it's inevitable because we're humans. When mm -hmm. you're going through things and you feel like the world is beating down mm -hmm. on you, um, you know, you just you question a lot. You question your worth. You question your purpose. Mm -hmm. You question where you're going. You question your faith. You, you question the essence of who you are. And I think partly being Pisces as well is that return to a greater energy and understanding the flow of energy. Mm -hmm. And you just gotta understand that it's gonna be okay. Yeah. And I don't know where I heard it growing up once, but I heard it where they were like, I think it could have been the Amazon Sant. And she said, the universe will never let you move from a situation until you've learned the lesson. That's mm -hmm. it. That's you know what I mean? And that's it. That's it. But at the end of the day, everything will fall into its place because it's part of one great puzzle. So everything's mm -hmm. gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. that's all. I, th I think for me it's, it's um, understanding what it's actually about mm -hmm. from an earlier age. Okay. Getting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, and what, what I mean by that is, when we're young, we're, still, we're all trying to find ourselves, we're all mm -hmm. trying to um, belong to a certain type of group, and we're also trying to um, um, fit in. Um, chasing the wrong things, but but if I got it from an early age, mm -hmm. but I still didn't do that badly. I started my foundation 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm 38 now, so I was what 26. Do you know what I mean? So if but if I if I had gotten it maybe eight or ten years earlier, I think it would have been better. I would have made even smarter or better decisions. Yeah. Uh, getting it meaning purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
That's also guys. Thank you. I feel that this has been fun, but I think more than anything we've covered so many good topics and conversations and it amazes me um, that when you open yourself up and you are willing and ready to learn that naturally life will give you and God will give you everything that you need and I think for me of course this is amazing for TV and it's amazing as a concept but I think it would be admiss of me to not say how much like genuinely and authentically everything that you've all contributed towards this tonight this conversation has meant to me well cheers to all of us oh thank you yeah. blessing upon every single one of you thank you